Hi, hey, Jiggity Hounds, folks. I'm your host, Draskin, and welcome to Take Whatever the Fuck This Is, Part 7, I don't know, of P Part 5 of Signalis, where in the last episode we got the workshop key and we got the owl cassette taped up, finished, fixed. We also got the revolver, which I am gladly going to be using. I'm not miffed at all. What are you talking about? Uh, there's a room that's been giving me more and more grievances the more and more takes I've been trying to do of this episode, so I'm bringing out the literal big guns to deal with this stupid room, because it's annoying me a little bit, if you can't tell. Anyway, in the playthrough I did before this part, and before the, well not before this part, but that's confusing, I learned that the inspect function actually does have a little bit more juicy details to it that uh, I didn't realize until I actually looked at things. So we're going to look at the key of love as an example, because we're going to be getting the key of eternity, which has not been pissing me off at all. Key of Love, cycle 888. I've tried to teach Elster how to dance. It's so cute how clumsy she can be when it comes to these things. And also, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that that's totally not the Penrose icon that's uh, in the thing there. Yeah. Cycle 1024. Before I met Elster, I never believed I would find someone I could fall in love with like that. Oh, how, how, how cute and how pretty. Okay, now we've done that, we've got that out of the way. I don't know how many times I've had to do that, but we've got it out of the way. Plate of Eternity is not important, it's just basically a glorified wagon wheel that has an extremely hard outer shell that's made of polished black marble or granite or something like that, and there's something soft and squishy and wet on the inside of it, which again, it's a wagon wheel, you can't change my mind. Um, so yeah, that's that. <sighs> So we're going to go to floor six first, because I need to get rid of the workshop key and the cassette that I have, because they're taking up valuable inventory spaces. Can you don't? I'm just, oh my, I am actually losing my marbles. Great, now the Yula unit is standing in front of the door. That's not going to make things much help, more helpful or whatever. Okay. Oh my god. Well, can I just get through here? Thank you. Oh my god. God, anyway. Star and Stork. Replica known issues. Delete this document after you've finished reading it. Star. Despite their normally laid back demeanor, stars have a strong internal hierarchy, which is important to take into consideration when promoting units to officers. Not promoting a respected unit, or promoting a unit low in status, can lead to friction within dorms. Stars will occasionally develop in-group rules involving physical punishments, especially on birthdays. It is recommended to allow some officers to own military weapons as fetish objects to stabilize their persona. Which does not sound like a recipe for disaster, uh, but remember in this particular case fetish objects refer to religious objects or like objects of spiritual or religious significance like idols, like I-D-O-L-S, not I-D-L-E-S, that's taking your time and... Stork units initially have a short temper. Training them in patience early after deployment is key, as their neural pattern is less stable than other models. Failing to do so may yield an extremely volatile personality type, prone to cruelty and violence. A common strategy is pairing them closely with an older star unit. Stork's persona stabilizes by showering or bathing. Books on history or mythology work well as fetish objects, which is perfect. Because yes, Cthulhu is our lord and savior. Also, by the way, because bathing and showering works so well, you know what a really good deterrent is? A water spray bottle. Just spritz her in the face when she starts acting unruly. Just when she starts acting a certain kind of way, just spritz. Just spray her in the face. Totally, totally calm her down. I have no evidence to suggest that that actually works, but hey, we'll go with what we... So we also got the cassette tape, like I mentioned, yeah. A looping multi-track magnetic audio cassette tape. 
Owl songs. The cassette seems to be part of a set of songs popular with the Yule units because they're called owls. Why else would they be called that? So you slot it in there. Take a note of the radio frequency because we'll need that. And I'm gonna grab the ammo here because Lord knows I'll need it. Uh, I'm gonna just keep the pistol on hand first. Now we're gonna go back. We're gonna go down to floor eight. And over here, you need the flashlight module in order to do literally anything in here. And you need to fight stuff in here, so. I apologize, but that that's what you gotta do. When desperate measures come to desperate whatevers. I would like to, oh, I actually killed her. I killed it, apparently. Okay, let me out of the way, yeah. I'm gonna grab the revolver to deal with the shield, bitch when she puts it down. Eventually. <sighs> Must you? Okay, I, was, I was worried I was just gonna go right through the door there for a minute. Okay. I have to manually reload. Don't worry about me, this is going fine. Okay, whatever. I'm not questioning it. Trust me, that room normally goes better, and I don't know why it's been giving me so much grief, but I actually also had a situation where I was trying to get through this, and uh, I got this, and I just had the stork looming over my shoulder while I was in the middle of combat when I was trying to read through this, and it was very, very funny in my head. It was actually still kind of annoying, because when I came out, I inevitably got stabbed in the back. Even though I'm trying to- I'm trying to get down to learning about the more inner workings and inner machinations of these wonderful creatures known as storks. Generation 5 combat lead unit. Replica stork. Security technician controlling. Height 240 centimeters. Each cotter of the protector security technicians is overseen by a controller unit. The most common of which is the stoker. Stork type. One of the tallest replica models, thanks to their extended legs, storks figuratively and literally keep a constant bird's eye view of any situation, ready to direct and coordinate their assigned security technicians. Their tough, no-nonsense demeanor, though sometimes described as brutal and even cruel, even uh, makes them the perfect fit as unwavering sentinels of order. Wow. But they can't keep their fucking dorm in order! Look, look at this shit. It's a mess. Clean it up. Right this instant, young man. Uh, I picked up the repair spray. I'm gonna use the hairspray. And what we want... Uh... Damn it, I shouldn't have grabbed those. I've destroyed more pistol ammo than I've used, I think. Uh, did I... Okay, I equipped the... There. Okay, good. Now I've got that out of the way. Get your radio and tune it to 65 hertz. Kilohertz. I'm amazed I already have it. And now we interact with this bookcase here and get the key of eternity. Incredible. It may still take a couple of interactions, because they can be fickle. Are you still looking for answers where there are only questions? There's nothing but heartbreak at the end. Interesting. Also, one thing to note is the key on this one uh, has what I, I believe is with the Pleiades constellation, because it's got the single star in the middle, and then it's got six stars surrounding it. And Pleiades is a seven-star constellation, I think. I believe. If memory serves. Also, one little detail I do really love about this game is the way the light interacts with certain things, like especially the blood. You can see, like, at the bottom of the screen there. The way the light interacts with the pixels, I just, I love it. It's just little details like that, that, uh, make it all that much better. Okay, now that we got all that, all that said and done, and shit, and stupid, we're gonna head up to floor seven. Well, you don't have to, I'm going to, because I'm going back to the piano room so I can put some of my stuff away. So I will do that, and I'll be back down at floor eight in a moment. Okay, we're here, and I totally didn't get into combat and get my spleen stabbed again. 
So in here, I already read the document on the table uh, in the last episode, so I'm not going to read it again. But it has information on the Mina and Adler units. And I'm going to try to be quick in here because enemies will pop up through the floor in here, so. Falk. Operational Command Controller Unit Replica Falcon. Generation 6 High-Tech Bioresonance Command Unit. Frame biomechanical with polyethylene shell below 250 centimeters tall. Commander eyes only. The protector for his commander, the head of each Aeon facility's protector force, is a powerful prototype bioresonant Falk unit. An authority that may never be questioned, a Falk unit serves not just as a commander to the protectors, but as a nearly godlike being, a perception that is underlined by her tall build and resemblance to our nation's leaders, the great revolutionary, and her daughter. It is also aided by her powerful prototype bioresonance module, which not only allows her to bend the will of weaker minds and fathom their intentions and emotions, but also grants her the ability to manipulate objects from a distance. She powerful. She very powerful. And this is where she lay. It's very sad. So I'm definitely going to grab the most most of the resources that are in here and then use them probably because I'm kind of sort of in dire need of assistance. Which actually again because I am going for the leave ending, I will make use of a lot of these repair thingies. Falk's diary. I don't know how much longer I can go on. I do not want to live anymore as what I've become. The red eye beyond the gate showed me. No. Touched me. Poisoned me. It feels like my mind has been contaminated, defiled by another person's memory. I'm no longer fully myself anymore. But I've not fully become someone else either. I'm stuck here. Between her and me with half-formed dreams and recollections penetrating my brain and tainting my every action. Who is she? Who is that white-haired girl? Why do I long to see her again? Why would she curse me like this? That's a good question. So now she's clutching a little owl thing, and it's very cute. It's very it's wonderful. So now that with the audio cassette that we uh, put in the thing, we have to tune our radio to 142 kilohertz. Beep. Shut your... Don't censor me. And... Close enough. It goes a little faster if you get it at 142, but it's close enough. Ah, it's a key. Pick up the hummingbird key. Now we will inspect it for brevity's sake. It normally authorizes a Calibri unit to access their personal quarters. Cool. So we'll go do that. I'm going to turn off the radio. Turn off the radio. And book it through this room because I don't want to have a confrontation with people. Oh no, I'm having a confrontation with people. That's exactly what I didn't want. Okay, so the hummingbird key is... I think it is actually through here, right? Yeah, it's this door here. Which I'm amazed that they don't get alerted to my presence, even though I just walk right in front of her. Okay, so this is Calibri's office. Eula and Ara units. Replica known issues, part one. Destroy the document. Yules tend to form large groups and like to sing and dance, as the original neural pattern for this unit was a ballet dancer. Persona degradation can easily be prevented in this unit by making sure they have access to music through tape players or musical instruments. Always place at least one mirror in Yule dorms, as they have a strong urge to check their own appearance at regular intervals. Yule's persona stabilizes by keeping a tidy appearance and through regular social interactions. Yules will often organize in groups of roughly 10 units and give each other themed nicknames. Ara. Even though they may seem like quiet simpletons, do not underestimate Aras. While they may not show it, they judge those who are rude or unkind harshly and will quietly share this judgment with their entire cadre. Aras get along best with Yules, who tend to be patient and friendly and have a talent for reading Aras' expressionless faces. In many facilities, 
Aras will construct service tunnels accessible only to them, often under floors and in walls. Unstable units may retreat into these tunnels. It is not recommended to attempt to retrieve them. So they're like cats. If they get sick or upset, they'll hide and run away and not want you to come in at all. Aura personas can best be stabilized by allowing them access to plants to take care of. Ideally, colorful flowers or trees. So that kind of goes to show that the units that keep crawling out of the vents, those are Aura units. I didn't know what they were to start with, but now I know, which is great. Colibri. Colibri. Command Control Unit Bioresonance Technology Replica Hummingbird. Generation 6 High Tech Bioresonance Specialist. Biomechanical with polyethylene shell. 152 centimeters. So a short stock. A marvel of modern technology. I used Marvel a lot in my commentary over the last couple of episodes, and now it actually gets written. Wow, it's incredible. The Calibri is the most capable bioresonance unit ever produced. Every protector, whatever the fuck, Commando Falk unit, is aided by a cotter of Calibri unit adjutants, which can amplify her bioresonance signals as well as produce their own. Despite their diminutive build, Calibris are one of the most effective protector units. Able to directly influence the minds of replicas and gestalts, extract information non-verbally, and communicate amongst themselves instantly within the full bandwidth of the senses, the Calibri's bioresonance is the closest recreation of a true hive mind. Wow. Still needs a stool to get up and grab the books, though. So she's not all powerful. She's still limited by being heightly challenged. Uh, I mean, it's still at full health, but I'm gonna use this anyway. Because again, you need to heal a lot if you're going for the leave ending. If you're not going for the leave ending, again, don't bother doing that. Don't do it. Don't. Pick up the eagle key. This is Adler's key, so we get to go into his personal quarters. Calibri's note. Keep an eye on Adler. He's hiding something from us. There was nothing in his diary, but when I probed his mind, there were memories of an Elster unit working at Serpinski. There's no record of that model of replica ever being deployed here. An order for a single unit for some survey work in the mine was briefly considered, but new, no, no new orders were made due to the commander's sickness. I was... I'm an imposter? Apparently. Magnetic keycard with an eagle motif. Normally or uh, normally authorizes an Adler unit to access their personal quarters. Interesting. Okay. So now we will go in here, and I think there will be a Calibri unit in here. Ow, my brain. In the last episode, I did loosely translate the stuff that kind of pops up. Uh, on the screen, and it's a very fucked up stuff. Okay, where did the... where did it move? 52. It actually went back up again. Okay, she's right here. Just end it. Okay. No space to carry shotgun. Uh, is this pistol? Oh, cool. That works out. No space to carry the post box key. I hate that. But I'm just gonna get rid of the pistol ammo again. Again, don't do that unless you absolutely have to, but, you know. Post box key, a small tubular lock key. Opens post box. 0512. That number keeps popping up an awful lot. Uh, can't inspect anything else in here, I don't think. Okay. Now, we got the eagle key, so I'm gonna go turn that, turn off my flashlight. Uh, we're gonna... I'm gonna book it past them because once we get to Adler's office uh, and we use the Eagle key uh, it will get out of our inventory which is good so all right 
I remember I did read, uh, this is where you get the flashlight. I did read the note that was on the chair already, so. Um. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something, aren't I? Yes, I am. Okay. Don't mind that. Don't don't go in there just yet. Well, I, thankfully, I did just get rid of that key. But um, we're actually going to go all the way back up to floor six, I think. We need uh, to get an object out of the post. Like the post office mailbox. Which is right here. 512, use the post box key. Pick up the library key. Okay. Right. Magnetic uh, library thing. Nothing of note. Yeah, it's a very interesting key. Nothing unassuming about it. Okay. So now we go all the way down to floor eight. It's a very complicated kind of back and forth that we have to do with this particular thing, but it uh, it is what it is. So the library key is used for the door this way. Right here. And there is a Calibri unit over there in the corner. Mina. Uh, mining nuclear tech high security replica Mina. Generation 3 industrial specialist. Biomechanical with high security reinforced armor plated servo shell. 260 centimeters tall. When it comes to dangerous cargo, heavy machinery, and hazardous environments, no other model rivals the Mina units with their high security power armor bodies. Even in lethal radiation, under crushing pressure and in zero G, they keep their calm demeanor and show exemplary teamwork. Despite their hulking bodies, underneath their face shields a standard underneath their face shields a standard generation three cranial construction can be found. Making maintenance and social interfacing as easy as with any other replica model. Please note that mine and neural patterns are not suitable for combat use. For combat applications, the Sapper variant should be used, which employs a combat-capable persona in the same frame. For more information, see the Schwer Anti-Panzer Replica Schnapper. Schnapper. She can schnapper you like a twig. She has the strength, trust me, I know. It's a Calibre unit. Speak to the... Who are you? You're not one of our staff. That's true, I'm not. The others, they've changed. We no longer sing in unison. Yeah, that, when I can hear a section out of tune, it's terrible. I used to be able to see into their minds. We were as one. Together, we guided them all. But now I can't understand their thoughts anymore. Well, yeah, they keep moving the frequency. I've never been so alone before. They're still together and I am here outside and they won't let me in I cannot stand their song anymore this is the only place where I don't have to hear them this is the only place I'm safe I can't go on like this I wish I'd become like the others too at least then I wouldn't be alone I hate this I hate this I still hate this I still hate it! Well, that's good. So that's unfortunate. Calibri. Known issue, replica known issues part 4. I destroy this after reading. Calibri. Great care should be taken... Should be given to Calibris. Their neural patterns are very unstable, and their bioresonance module makes them very susceptible to influence from others. Like most bioresonant individuals, Calibris will often subconsciously create an emotional feedback loop imitating and then broadcasting the emotions of those around them, acting as a sort of amplifier. While they are trained to recognize and disengage this behavior, already unstable units can sometimes spiral into persona degradation. Due to their bioresonant connection, neural pattern development in Calibris varies less than in other models. The constant exchange of memories and emotions between units of the cadre acts as a safety net that buffers extreme changes. However, once a majority of units in a cadre degrade, they will drag the remaining units down with them. Because of this, it is important to decommission Calibri units instantly when they begin to degrade. 
For Persona stabilization, Calibri should have access to a well-stocked library. Which is why she is still okay in here. Now, speaking of which, there is a book that we need to grab from in here, and in order to be able to do that, you have to kind of, like, wiggle this particular thing all the way up. The book we're trying to get is this one up here, in the top right. So it's a little bit of a pain to get this one, but it's fairly not too bad. Uh, I'm not reading it out because of just how many things you need to do there, but yeah. There you go. No spit. I'm gonna commit Harry Carry. Uh, combine those to make another. Okay, that worked. Excellent. I didn't have to use it immediately. But we need this astrolabe. And also, if you notice, the tesseract symbol is on this book. Again. And I think the. The Tesseract symbol-ish thing is also on this astrolabe, which is interesting. The back of this device looks like it's it might slot into a bigger mechanism. It does. It's actually important for the thing in Adler's office that I was about to use, and then I realized, oh, wait, we need a thing for that. Uh, which I think... Adler's office is on this floor, right? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Then we can just go straight there. So the solution to the astrolabe is the star map room, which I think I went to, but I won't. I'll just go back to it just because, again, I don't remember if I went to it or not in the last episode. I might have briefly gone in there. But the star map room is this one right here. And in order to get it, when it first starts up and you see Haymot at the topmost section, remember the relationship between the planets in relation to Haymot. Because that is the solution of the astrolabe puzzle. Which we will go and do right now. That's not fair. Okay. So now we're going to go through and snoop through all of his documents. Adler's Diary. I have been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage. A strange box with a removable dial in the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear on the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking like a clock. Without Calibri's help, it has become much harder to coordinate the logistics cadre. If there is anything good to say about that woman, it is how she knows how to make others respect her orders despite her minuscule stature. I went to see her today, but her room is still locked. I had a dream tonight. Another memory of my gestalt life, I believe. I was wearing my uniform. There was a young woman, her hair white as snow, and I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on them, and asked her to guess the planet on the card I was holding. I was playing with that mechanical box again, of which I am now sure this is some kind of astronomical calendar. When I suddenly remembered a conversation I had with another replica when I was inspecting the mining site. However, it was clearly a model I have never seen before. Some type of engineer with an orange chest piece. In my memory, she was just another member of our, member of our staff, but no such replica was ever stationed on Serpinski. Replica memory is not the most reliable, they say, but never before have they experienced such a strange phenomenon. The little enigma of that box could only distract me from the chaos around me for so long. All the box contained was a small notebook, of which all the pages turned out to be blank. It has been miserable since our beloved commander has fallen ill. I long for her stern guidance, that overwhelming authority in which she bathes a room. More sick, making my work har ever harder. How are we meant to shoulder this workload with no reinforcements? My only consolation is that as our protector staff decreases, so does the workforce we oversee. While more and more replica end up in the hospital wing, Gestalt workers seem to succumb much too fast for any attempts at treatment. Another diary filled, for no benefit but my own satisfaction. I've not ordered a new one yet, since I spent my saved ration marks on that marvelous-looking fountain pen. 
But I guess I'll make use of that notebook. Elster. Interesting. Land survey ship technician. Magpie. Generation 5 Cosmo Pioneer Specialist. A versatile combat engineer unit, primarily designed for orbital service. These tough and stoic loners are best suited as specialist sappers and scouts. Their technical knowledge and combat capabilities make these units true survivalists, especially when their iconic white and blue heavy combat combination, which sports bullet-resistant armor plating on their chest and forearms. Since the original neural pattern for this unit was lost with the destruction of the Central Neural Archive on Veneta, new Elster units have been produced based on a decommissioned unit from the Penrose program. Interesting. Okay, I think that's all the documents we can read in here. It's just those two, I think. So now with the Astrolabe, you can see the cards on the table. Ah... The cards on the, the... You can notice that one looks similar. And the other one had the Penrose icon on it. Use the Astrolabe. Okay. So Haymont is the star at the top there. And then you have to put these in relation to the uh, thing, which I believe goes... Uh, something like this. Hey! I remembered. So we'll read his diary first. Shrine Diary. I started yet another new diary. How time flies. The work is dull and monotonous as ever in Serpinski, but a bright light illuminates my day. Today I was invited to a meeting by Commander Falk, and she was as magnificent as ever. Another day passes. During my meeting with the Commander today, I felt the strangest sensation of familiarity as I sat with her. Sadly, our meeting was interrupted by an unexpected power outage. I've been feeling strangely paranoid these days. Never before have I felt so strongly the sensation of deja vu as I have these past few days. When I checked the pages of my diary today, I noticed that for some inexplicable reason I seem to have dated my previous entries with today's date. What an embarrassing mistake. Every day feels a bit like I've lived it before, and even stronger is the sensation that something is, somehow, just slightly out of place. Why is my diary filled with entries that I cannot recall writing? Why are they all dated to today? Has the loss of my beloved commander finally gotten to my mind? Am I going insane? I fear what will happen to me if anyone finds out. I am alone in this. If they discover my notes, I'll be de decommissioned too. Something is wrong. I can feel it. Is this really madness? When I read the pages of my diary, I recall events that never happened. A yesterday that never was. Yet it feels as real as the one I actually experienced. This cannot merely be a defect of my mind. It feels as though in this room, I peer into another version of reality. How? I do not know. Perhaps I too have become sick like the others without realizing. But I will not succumb. A slow accumulation of reproduction errors, a gradual corruption of information, a story misremembered slowly morphing with each retelling, like genetic material mutating and evolving, like the replica mind copied over and over from an aging template? I do not know, but I will find out. The answers lie below. I can feel it. Someone or something calls me from there. In the mine. Hmm. Pick up administrator's key. Authorizes access to the mineshaft elevator. Adler 2301, Management, Administration, and Logistics Operational Command. Okay. So now that we have that and we've wasted a sufficient amount of time talking about stuff, there's a lot of lore dumps in this particular area and episode, so it's worthwhile reading all of it, which is why that took a lot longer than it, uh, normally would have. So this is the access to the mining, the mineshaft elevator. Uh, we will use it and head down in the next episode because it's a perfect way to end this part. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you back in episode six.
as we go down into the mineshaft. <laughs>